Okay, it's a uh, non-farm payroll for March coming out today, um, Friday. Right, I'm looking at 10-year T-note. I haven't done a video for a while because I haven't had a lot to say. I'll explain why in a minute. But the 10-year T-note is still holding this 34-year trend line. Look at that trend line. It goes all the way back to 1984. Uh, you can see we've got the 200-month trend line, 200-month, uh, sorry, moving average just below that. And we've also got 38.2% Fibonacci at 19.24 and change. So, um Important, very important support down here for the 10-year, and it is holding, although we haven't seen much of a bounce. I've, been ha I've had a long position on for ages, and it's just not working, although I decided I've got bored of it now and cut out, so that definitely means we're about to take off. That always happens. I hold the position. As soon as I get out, we rock it. What I really need to see is a break above 121.06, uh, this fib and, fib and trend line going on up here. That should, I hope, trigger the rally, and I'll have to get back in again. Right, dollar index has been a complete puzzle. Uh, you're looking at the monthly. Here we go. I'm going to move myself over here. That's better. Um, okay, so you're looking at the monthly US dollar index chart. Now, uh, you can see how we've come back over the past year or so when I move this out now. And we've uh, held the 50% Fibonacci and the 200 month moving average. We've got quite a blue bullish candle on the monthly chart there. So I have been looking for this dollar index to recover. It hasn't happened yet. I can't make much of this pattern. I mean, you could say this is a double bottom. You know, I thought this, this day on the first day of March, we'd broken up and I was getting all bullish, but I was completely fooled by this uh, red engulfing candle, which then sent us lower. So the question now is, can we finally break up through 9050 and get this recovery started? I think we can. One big reason why I think we can is this euro looks ready to take a dive. So the euro's had a really good run up over the past year and a bit. Uh, we got up to the 23.6% fib at 125.16, gave that a good going over, or uh, almost got to the 61.8% fib you see on the monthly chart here at 126.01. Didn't quite make it. We got uh, we, got, we were halted by the 200 month moving average and the 100 month moving average. So you can see there is a heck of a lot going up at one, going, going on at 125, 00, 126, 00. And it certainly has done its job of stopping the market in its tracks. You can see we're also very overbought on the monthly chart. And I'm looking very long term, but I think you have to in this particular case. Now then, is this a, a, a head and shoulders pattern or even a double top? Well, certainly we've had the double top already, but this could also be a head and shoulders pattern, uh, left shoulder head right shoulder we won't know for sure until it's broken below the neckline which is quite low down so unfortunately we have quite a wait to see if it happens but uh, there's a lot going on with trend lines here as well as you can see so I, the, 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 um, ideally we need to be patient and wait to see what happens at around the 121 and a half area and with 121 break below 121.20 being the sell signal um, you might not want to wait that long obviously we've got to see it come off another 150 pips or more before we get the sell signal but anyway it is looking pretty negative at the moment the Aussie dollar doesn't give us many clues Aussie versus the US which it's been in a bit of a correction recently we are in a very gentle upward sloping channel as you can see but I can't get bullish unless we get back above 98.50 and the daily chart is a bit of a mess uh, here again we have held a 50% fib and there is a trend line there but that's not a very important trend line and these moving averages are a bit of a mess. So I'm not seeing many signals from the Aussie. I don't really know what's going to happen with that one. It's, it's one to leave alone, I think. New Zealand dollar on the longer term charts is a complete mess. Daily chart gives us some idea. Um, you can see that we've held this 38.2% Fibonacci support at 71.85. We've also held, had the, held the red 200 day moving average, which is just below it. And we've had a good bounce off there. So we have got a double top, but that hasn't really kicked in yet. So for my money now, the fact that we've held this support gives us a chance to rally. Obviously, we, if we could get through this week's high at uh, 73.11, that would be encouraging. And then we'll see if we can test that uh, 74.30, 74.35 area if we do push higher. Again, not the strongest chart I've ever seen. You know, not really giving me a huge amount to go on. But if you put a gun to my head and said you've got to put a position on, I would buy it. I've just added this trend line here just to give you another sort of uh, clue. So above 72.81 is the fib. That also coincides with the trend line. So I'm guessing that a break above there would be pretty good. If we can't get through 72.80, then maybe back down to test that 71.85 area. Obviously, if that does not hold, that would be uh, a very negative signal and we would be collapsing pretty quick down to at least 71.15, 71.10. 
Gold's been difficult lately. Um, you can see that we have the double top, kind of a double top. Um, Jan Feb headed lower, but we've really just gone sideways. There's no clues here on the daily chart, not for me anyway. We did spike down to this 100-day moving average and trend line and then rallied off it, but there's no pattern here. I don't see anything particularly clear. I think you have to go to the longer term charts to get any clarity at all. It's been, it's been difficult this last two months, really. Um, the short term stuff is just not clear at all. So weekly chart. Actually, do you know what? I'm going to show you the monthly chart. I think that's actually that gives us the most clarity. So um, firstly, before you think it, this is not an inverse head and shoulder. This is not a left shoulder head right shoulder formation because it's completely out of, out of proportion with the decline in the gold price. So I do not see this as a very bullish inverse head and shoulders. I think people are talking about it. Maybe they're right. Maybe I'm completely wrong. But I don't see it like that. What I see is a strong resistance from the 38.2% fib around 1379.80, which we haven't managed to get to because we've been held back by this trend line here. Uh, which goes back to the high of 2014, joins the high of 2016, and the high of 2017. So uh, this to me is very important. 100 month blue moving average also causing us to struggle. So I think that this chart tells us that gold is going lower. Uh, but again, a bit of a mess really. No clear patterns. I, I'm going to go with I'm going to go with a negative outlook. Just show you the daily chart again, just to remind me. Okay, so scrunch this up a wee bit. If we start to break below 1308, of course, we're going to test what is probably going to be the most important support around 1302, 1300 area. That's the 100 day moving average and this trend line here. And then if we collapse below there, we'll be hitting 1288. And then we don't see a really good support level until we get down to 12, the low 1270 area. So I favor the downside, although uh, right now uh, it's not telling me an awful lot or getting me very excited about any particular trade. The patterns in the dollar yen well quite interesting actually so you could say we, that we've got a huge uh, inverse head and shoulders pattern here on the monthly dollar yen chart I think that this does count as a left shoulder this does count as the head and this does count as the right shoulder so uh, it is it is you know relatively it is in line with with what happened uh, in recent years so could this be a huge bottoming pattern yeah why not as we zoom in to more recent years, we're looking at a 23.6% FIB support at 106.64 and the 100 month moving average. As you can see, we are just kissing it at the moment. Where is that value? Uh, 105.60 and that's held perfectly. So I'm feeling quite bullish about this. Uh, if this is the completion of the right shoulder and we can get back above 106.64, which we are as I speak, we're at 106.72. Then we need to get back up through this trend line at 108.90, shall we say, and then we need to break this trend line at 112.11. So keep an eye on it and take this trend line off. We don't need that one. Uh, but yeah, there's hope for dollar yen bulls. And if it does start to go, it's really going to start to go. So it's kind of get in and forget you've got the position on a comeback in a few years, probably, and see where it's gone. Uh, looking good so far today. I've actually bought this today. I got in at 106.70, 106.60, so just above this uh, one, this 23%, 23.6% fib at 106.47. I got in just above there after the breakout, so I am looking for it to go up to sort of 107, the low 107 area. Struggle a little bit at these fibs, and then push on up to the 108 and a half area and see what happens there. So yeah, I, I think this looks pretty good. I think it is worth holding along. Of course, saying this before the non-farm payroll number, that could completely cock up all my ideas. But dollar, dollar versus the Canadian US dollar versus the Canadian dollar. I got very, uh, I, I run this up from the break above 127.20. I got very bullish on this. So I'm really pleased that we ran up a couple of hundred pips from there. And if you managed to jump in on that trade, well done. We got up to 130.00. So we've hit the 100 week moving average as resistance. And I just had a feeling that was going to hold. And thankfully, I was right. We had two opportunities to short off that level this week. So they've both been great trades, 100 pip trades. Very nice. Um, getting volatile at the top here. OK, I'm going to favor a move to the downside. Um, obviously, if we break up through 130.00, that kills that idea. And we're going straight up to 131.30 as the next test. We do have quite a lot of resistance up there as well. By the time we get there, we are going to be looking at, hold on, 
looking at a much better selling opportunity at 130, 130.30, coupled with the trend line at 130, well, it's at 131.88 at the moment, but it'll probably be a little bit lower by the time we get there. So uh, we'll see. That would be a nice selling opportunity, but I've got a feeling we're going to turn lower anyway. As I say, non-farm payroll might, uh, might change things.